We live in a generation where it's easier than ever to become famous or well-known on the internet. YouTube is the most popular platform out right now where thousands of channels surpass 1 million subscribers each and every year. With channels like Mr. Beast and PewDiePie surpassing 50 million and even 100 million subscribers. And then you have Twitch and other platforms where live streamers can also captivate a massive audience. Again, becoming well known during the present day is easier than ever, whether it be putting out great entertaining content for your viewers or being a complete idiot who makes controversial content for their viewers. It seems like anyone can generate a buzz around their name and their brand through social media platforms during the present day. But for every Mr. Beast or Mark Rober, there is a Mizzy or in this case, a Trevor Jacob. These types of creators do everything in their power to connect with their audience or get very famous and make as much money online as possible. Mizzy has made a name for himself over the past couple of weeks for some of the antics that he's been doing in the streets of London like walking into people's houses while the owners of the house are in attendance with their children or taking over a train causing mass panic for the passengers aboard. These are the antics of a clout chaser, someone who is so desperate to attain fame that they will put their own lives at risk for 15 seconds of fame just so that in 20 years they could tell everyone that they were the ones that either took over a train cart or did something so viral that they're on the news or on other YouTubers channels. Now, of course, this isn't the first time we have witnessed this desperation online. Sam Pepper was another YouTube personality who used his platform to prank unsuspecting victims. Like when he pranked his friend with a fake kidnapping, where Vine star Sam Gobach was fake kidnapped with his friend Brock, and at the end of the video, Sam Pepper acts like he just took the life of Sam's friend Brock, leaving Sam Gobach shocked and scared. The internet was outraged, and at this point in time, the question for YouTube and content was how far was too far. And this turned out to be a prank that went way too far, and a petition was signed to get Sam Pemper off of the YouTube platform. These two creators are good examples of clout chasing, with Mizzy being a really good example because he is an incredibly small YouTuber and TikToker who constantly puts himself and bystanders in harm's way in order to get a viral TikTok without any care for how people view him or the people he may scar in the process. But what if you took a public stunt so far that you got a maximum of 20 years in federal prison? The story of Trevor Jacob is unmatched to any other clout chasing YouTuber on the platform and it all started around one year ago. This event was so massive that Trevor Jacob received media coverage from all over the world and a few months after, Trevor Jacob was handed his very own documentary by Vice, which as of today received close to 450,000 views on Vice's channel. But who is Trevor Jacob? Trevor Jacob is a 29 year old snowboarder who competed in the Winter X Games from 2014 through 2016. His love for snowboarding would fuel his thrill-seeking and adventurous side, and he met friends that participated in the same type of love of thrill-seeking, capturing some of his adventures on video and uploading them to YouTube over the past 10 years. Trevor Jacob said that all he had to do for a video was grab a camera and capture what he was doing that day, and this was evident with his earliest uploads to the platform. Like when he jumped over a moving train with a snowboard or recorded himself train hopping. These videos were sporadic and he never made YouTube his full-time career, only uploading when he had the footage to publish. As the years went on, his videos became a bit more unhinged, like when he jumped out of an airplane with no clothes on onto a public beach. Now the story starts to take a turn in what was a massive publicity stunt that had the whole world captivated. So what was this stunt? Well, it had to do with one video uploaded to Trevor Jacobs YouTube account. The video in question is one titled, I crashed my airplane a video that received over 4 million views as of today, and the video that would spark an investigation into Trevor Jacob and the truth behind the plane crash. Videos came out after Trevor Jacob's video was released and gained traction. Speaking about Trevor Jacob and the airplane that was crashed, many believing that the whole entire video was a stunt for a sponsorship. There are a couple major flaws with Trevor's video, which instantly caused controversy online. One flaw being that the door for the plane was slightly open before the engine started to fail. 
fail. Another flaw was Trevor's lack of trying to fix the plane or restart the engine before abandoning the plane. Now, actually, there are four reasons why people believe this video is fake. The third reason was due to Trevor already having a parachute on, which is something you wouldn't wear if you didn't intend to jump out of an airplane. And the final flaw was when Trevor hiked all the way back up to the crash site just to grab the footage off of the plane that crashed into the hill. And instead of just parachuting all the way out of harm's way or parachuting all the way to civilization, he turned around and parachuted to the plane. Now, big YouTubers within the the aviation community on YouTube reacted to this video and they all had the same skepticism. With Trent Palmer uploading a full video reacting to and giving his own views on Trevor's plane crash, where Trent from the beginning saw some issues with the video, here's parts of Trent's video and I'll leave a link to his full video in the comments below. Like he's trying to slow the plane down to stall speed and the only reason I could think that he's doing that is just to try to get the prop to stop for dramatic effect. If you were to have your engine quit, which, you know, I guess I should go back to this. It's not that I don't have any ground to stand on. I have had uh, engine failure over the mountains, similar to this. Um, I was at a much lower altitude. Um, mine didn't quit in the way that was like fuel starvation or anything. I had a mechanical failure and the thing stopped so violently. I didn't have to do anything to stop the prop. But when I've shut off the engine, you know, in the past, the force from the wind will make the prop windmill. And this is even on a Rotax with a high compression engine on something like this Continental or whatever's on this Taylor Craft, it's gonna be lower compression, just the air blowing over, it's gonna windmill the prop. And what it looks like he's doing here, and this is again, at least in the way it plays out in the video, is right after the engine failed, he's pulling it back to stall and basically sitting there trying to get it as slow as he can, which is not what you do when your engine quits. You, you pitch for best glide, or at least deal with flying the aircraft and start looking for somewhere to land. And while on that topic of, of looking for somewhere to land, I mean, at this angle right now, there's not a ton of great places to land. Um, although even this, you know, grassy hillside looks, you know, manageable, but anyway, it's a little suspect that he's immediately pulling on the yoke, trying to get it slow. It's also suspect that his door's already unlatched. I don't know. Now he got the prop to stop. I'd be really interested to see the inside angle because he has two other cameras inside the plane, but for some reason he doesn't show anything going on inside until this angle. And now it looks like he's holding on to the camera. Holy I'm over the mountains and I get out of the engine out. Not even, not even like oh. looking for a place to land. Oh. oh, that thing's like buffeting on stall right now. Which I guess if you're jumping out of a plane and you have the option to slow it down, I guess you do. Okay, that, again, there's there's a, a ton of things that are just wrong about this video, but aside from him deciding to fly with a skydiving parachute instead of one that you would use for test flying or, or you know, the seatback ones that you use in an airplane, if he's really in an emergency situation right now, this is life or death, um, why would he be, well, one, why would you have a camera in your hand and, and selfie it, but why are you tracking out and, and looking back and posing for something like this, looking at your airplane. I, I'm sure he's gonna say something like, you know, I was making sure that the airplane wasn't gonna fly at me or hit me when I was, you know, when I had the chute deployed, but it just, it's fishy. And then also right behind him, I mean, that looks like a pretty nice little like gravel wash or sand wash that I'm fairly confident you can land your plane in. Still free falling. How to get that shot? He pull out his phone to film the plane crashing. Yeah, look at this whole wash behind him. That looks like a totally landable spot. And, and then. You know, when it, when it comes to emergency landings, in, in a scenario like this, say his engine actually did fail, emergency landings are made to save lives, not airplanes. And I can, with fairly high confidence, say that there is somewhere in that wash that you could glide to that you're gonna be able to walk away from. It might wreck your plane, but again, at that point, it should be insurance as airplane. Um, you go and try to land your airplane. It's just the hazard that he's creating by jumping out of the airplane and just letting it fly is ridiculous. Again, I'll circle back to this, but 
man. After all of the videos came out calling out Trevor for obviously lying and faking the plane crash, Trevor took the original video and trimmed out big portions of it, trimming out the sponsorship part and parts of the camera footage from inside the cockpit. This once again raised suspicion into the fabrication of the video. This incident took place on the 24th of November in 2021, and a couple days after the crash happened, he contacted the National Transportation Safety Board, and they tell him he was responsible for making sure the crash site wasn't touched but on december 10th trevor and his friend went back to the plane and had it airlifted out of the site from there trevor would dismantle the plane and toss it into different bags and dispose of the pieces of the plane around the airport in the court files it would state that trevor jacob would plead guilty but he'd take a plea deal to give up information on the plane and everything that happened during the crash. In the files, it would state on November 24th, 2021, Jacob took off in his airplane from Lompoc City Airport on a solo flight purportedly destined for Mammoth Lakes. Jacob did not intend to reach his destination, but instead planned to eject from his aircraft during the flight and video himself parachuting to the ground and his airplane as it descended and crashed. He admitted in the plea agreement. Prior to taking off, off, Jacob mounted several video cameras on different parts of the airplane and equipped himself with a parachute, video camera, and selfie stick. Approximately 35 minutes after taking off while flying above Los Padres National Forest near Santa Maria, Jacob ejected from the airplane and videoed himself parachuting to the ground. Using the video camera mounted on the selfie stick and the video cameras he mounted on the airplane, Jacob was able to record the airplane as it descended and crashed into a dry brush area in Los Padres National Forest. After parachuting through the ground, Jacob hiked to the location of the wreck and recovered the data containing the video recording of his flight and the crash of the airplane. The plea agreement states, On November 26, 2021, Jacob informed the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, about the plane crash. The NTSB, which launched an investigation into the crash on or about the same day, told Jacob that he was responsible for preserving the wreckage so the agency could examine it. Jacob agreed to determine the crash location and provided both the coordinates of the downed plane and videos of the crash to NTSB investigators. Three days later, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, launched its own investigation into the plane crash. In the weeks following the plane crash, Jacob lied to investigators that he did not know the wreckage's location according to the plea agreement. In fact, on December 10th, 2021, Jacob and a friend flew by helicopter to the wreckage site. There, Jacob used straps to secure the wreckage, which the helicopter lifted and carried to Rancho Cisco in Santa Barbara County, where it was loaded into a trailer attached to Jacob's pickup truck. Jacob drove the wreckage to Lompoc City Airport and unloaded it in a hangar. He then cut up and destroyed the airplane wreckage and over the course of a few days deposited the detached parts of the wreckage airplane into trash bins at the airport and elsewhere, which he admitted in his plea agreement was done with the intent to obstruct federal authorities from investigating the November 24th plane crash. Now, is this the dumbest person we've ever seen on YouTube? Maybe not. But Trevor Jacob is pretty stupid to believe that his stunt will look so real that no one would question the video's authenticity. From recording the whole event to parachuting down to the crash site to recover the data on the cameras, Trevor has to be the dumbest criminal because he recorded himself doing illegal things and captured himself lying on video. After the video went live, he only uploaded one last video of him doing MMA, where in the first 30 seconds of the video, he got rocked. And after this, his channel has been absolutely quiet. Trevor Jacob is currently going through the court systems, and this information all came to light in early May of 2023, and he hasn't been sentenced just yet. Of course, the sentencing period and the amount of time he could be in jail is from one year to 20 years. But since he did take a plea deal and he gave up information, I'm guessing they're going to be more lenient, especially because it's not like he hurt really anybody. There was no intent to hurt anybody. And even though he did obstruct some of the information or the airplane itself so that these investigators couldn't do their job with investigating the whole crash site and everything, it does seem like they might be a little bit more lenient just because it's not like he hit anybody. And the only person that he really hurt was himself because it took him like 18 hours to get back to civilization. But this has to be the biggest cloud chaser to ever record his crimes and put it out on video. Of course, it's up there with Mizzy because Mizzy's been a big cloud chaser recently where he just records his videos or records his crimes of him going into other people's houses and just making a, a, 
a foolery out of his whole entire brand. But how do you feel about Trevor Jacob? And do you think he will get out of jail sooner than later? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any YouTubers or video ideas you want me to check out, the best way to recommend them to me is through my Instagram DMs or Discord, which will both be linked in the comments below. Along with those links, there will also be a third link to my second channel where I post videos that won't be uploaded to this channel. They're mostly small commentary videos where I don't put too much effort into. And I kind of just speak whatever I have to say and then I upload it. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Uh, and again, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Content creators alike come together to create great pieces of work. This helps build up a fan base around the creator and the content that they provide, but what happens when the creator gets some unnecessary hate aimed at their content or channel and nothing could stop the fuel that was feeding this fire? Today we discuss Jellybean, a content creator who just a year ago had mobs of creators.